You there? Are you tired of your foundry going? <coughs> oh, God. Well, boy, do I have the thing for you. Tips and tricks to optimize your foundry instance. Hi there, my name is Fondue. I run this channel called Dice and Easy, where I give you foundry VTT tutorials and tricks, TTRPG general discussions, oh, second finger, and daily TTRPG memes as YouTube shorts. So if any of those interest you, hit that like and that subscribe button down there to get my content. Whether you are a GM or a player who is using Foundry, I'm going to give you actionable tips and tricks in this video on how you can improve the performance of Foundry on your machine if you are having performance issues. There's a variety of different things that we can look at when we want to optimize our Foundry instance, whether we are the one hosting it or just playing in it. But first, let's look at the minimum and recommended specifications for Foundry because did you know Foundry has them? So these are the minimum specs for Foundry VTT for players. A relatively modern computer running Windows 10 or 11, Mac OS Big Sur or newer, or Linux operating systems with support for a 64-bit architecture, an integrated GPU to enable hardware acceleration, eight gigabytes of RAM, a monitor no smaller than 1366 by 768, at this minimum resolution, many aspects of the UI will feel cramped, however. A modern web browser like Chrome, Firefox, Opera, or Edge with hardware acceleration enabled. Safari is not a supported browser at this time. So those are the minimum specifications. So if your computer does not meet these minimum specs, you're gonna run into performance issues and even the tips here might not be able to fix all of them, but they might still be able to fix some of them, so stick around. And now let's look at the recommended specifications if you are a player. Once again, a relatively modern computer running Windows 10 or 11, Mac OS Big Sur or newer, or Linux operating systems with support for 64-bit architecture. A dedicated GPU which supports WebGL 2.0, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a monitor with 1920 by 1080 resolution or higher, a mouse, you can use the software with a touchpad, but Current software is designed for mouse and keyboard, Chrome or a Chromium based browser, so that means Edge or Opera for example, provides an experience closest to the Foundry VTT desktop application. So those are the recommended specifications, so that's what Foundry recommends as you as a player who is connecting to a host, so you're using your browser to play, should have. Now, like I said, if you don't meet the minimum recommended specifications or even the recommended ones, you're gonna have some performance issues. But like I said, in this video, I'm gonna go through actionable things that you can do to fix performance issues. I should also mention that there are minimum specifications for hosting Foundry VTT on your screen. So if you are a GM who is hosting and others are connecting to your machine, I'll leave a link to those specifications in the description box below and you can have a look there. Okay, with that out of the way, let's start talking about the actions that you can take today to improve the performance of Foundry VTT on your machine. Firstly, I wanna mention that this is for Foundry version 10, which is the one that I am using and it's the latest stable version. I cannot guarantee that these tips will work for any of the previous versions of Foundry, so keep that in mind. You should also try these solutions in the order that I present them in. This is because some of the options down the line are gonna actually cost you money, and I would rather you try these three options first before spending any money to fix performance issues. Also, please try these options one by one and not many at the same time because you might end up over-optimizing your Foundry instance. Yes, I know it'll take a little bit of time, but that way you know that you have it optimized exactly as much as you need so that you don't lose any fidelity. Firstly, let's talk about other software on your computer. Now there's a good chance that while you're playing with Foundry VTT, you're running other software like Discord, for example, for a call. Well, you should have a look at all the other software that your computer is running at the same time as you're running Foundry VTT. Because if you're running other software in addition to Foundry VTT, those might eat up resources that Foundry could be using to run your game better. So open up your task manager if you're on Windows, that's Control, Shift, and Esc on your keyboard. That's, you can directly open it that way. And there you can see what is eating up your memory, your CPU and your GPU. If there is a program there that's eating it up a lot that you don't need during your Foundry VTT session, turn that off so that Foundry can have more resources to use in your computer. Here's a little tip on what to do there. Discord can sometimes be a bit heavy on the machine. So one way to optimize is to have Discord running on your phone, for example, and then you don't need to have it running on your 
machine. And that way you can save some resources and enjoy playing Foundry. Next, let's talk about hardware acceleration. I mentioned this in the minimum specifications part, but Foundry VTT relies on hardware acceleration being turned on for your internet browser. So if you are a player, go to your settings and turn on hardware acceleration. This is very important. This can have a tremendous impact on how well Foundry runs in your browser. If you don't know how to do that, I'm gonna link some guides to like the major browsers on how to turn on hardware acceleration in the description below. Go check there on how you can turn on hardware acceleration. Do turn it on. Next, if none of those help and you're still having performance issues, let's look at the settings in Foundry that you can change to improve your performance. First off, of course, make sure that when you're making these changes, your GM has your Foundry server up and running so that you can access it and go change settings. And in Foundry, what you're going to want to do is go to game settings, configure settings, and then core section. That's the place where we can adjust some things to improve your performance. First, try toggling off pixel ratio resolution scaling. If that doesn't help, try lowering the performance mode. Try medium first, then try low. Try lowering the maximum frame rate. It'll probably be at 60, so lower it down to 30 first, and then you can try going even lower, but it is going to give a jankier experience for you. So going below 30 is not something I recommend for a nice experience, but you can go below 30 if you would like. Then toggle off token vision animation, then toggle off light source animation. Remember, do these options one by one, so turn off one, save the settings, see how that impacts your performance, and then go on with the next one so that you don't over-optimize. And lastly, if none of these helped, toggle the disable game canvas option on. Now, this will turn off the game canvas for you, but other features like the character sheet and rolling will be available. It's not an optimal thing to do, but if you're having heavy performance issues, this could be a good fix. Now then, let's talk about modules, because sometimes modules can actually be the source of performance issues, because modules are developed by the community at large, and of course, it's done mostly as a hobby for free. So some modules might become old and deprecated, and if you have those running, they might conflict with what Foundry has in it right now. Now, if you're a power user like me, you're gonna have over a hundred. <laughs> so over a hundred modules running there and it can be very, very difficult to find out which module is the one that's causing the issue or very time consuming. Luckily, there is a tool that can help us identify the problematic modules. It's called Quick Module Enable. I'll put a link to that down in the description. But this module allows us to easily disable and enable modules and to check if there are major or minor incompatibilities with the modules and the Foundry version that you're running based off of the version number of Foundry. So this way you can go turn on and off modules that you like one by one to see if any of them are causing issues. So you can go through the major ones first, the ones that have major incompatibilities, turn off modules one by one to see if any of them impact your performance and then go through the minor ones. Now, yes, this is time consuming if you are going through these one by one as the GM, but it is worth it because if you have a module that is tanking your performance for one reason or another, for everyone, that is not a good experience for you and your players and you want to disable that module and get rid of it and replace it with something that does not cause that. Modules are wonderful, I love them, but yeah, sometimes the module is the culprit and quick module enable can help you find the problem. Next, let's talk about improving your internet connection. Sometimes the problem might be that you have an unstable internet connection, for example, or a bunch of other reasons related to the internet. Firstly, if your machine is connected to your home Wi-Fi network via the wireless connection, I highly recommend switching to a wired connection, so using a cable, because this connection is a lot more stable than your Wi-Fi connection. And depending on your Wi-Fi box, you might even get a faster connection that way, but that depends on your setup at home, which I don't know. But then this is for the person that is hosting your foundry, so most likely your GM. But if you are located far away from your players, geographically, for example, you're in the US and your players are in Europe or Asia, this is going to cause latency issues because there's just a large amount of geographical distance 
between you and that can cause performance issues. There are some solutions here. However, you could use a hosting service like The Forge, which I personally use and like, not sponsored, and then set your region to something closer to your player's region. You can do that in The Forge by going to My Account and Server Region. There you can change the server region. There are also other hosting services than The Forge. I just mentioned The Forge because that's the one that I use and I know. So I just wanted to give you a note on that. Of course, it costs, but I think it's like five bucks a month. So it's not too bad. And they, of course, have proper infrastructure for handling internet traffic going in and out, which can also help. However, if you still want to keep hosting yourself, I totally get that and that's very valid, but you want to make sure that your hardware and upload speed of your internet connection are up to the minimum specs, which I mentioned before and the link you can find in the description below. Oh, by the way, if you're using Dice So Nice to have 3D dice rolling on your screen, that can actually have quite a big impact on performance. And did you know the Dice So Nice in the settings has a section where you can fiddle around with the performance of Dice So Nice. You should have a look there and if worse comes to worse, you can actually disable the 3D dice altogether, and that's a per user setting. So if one person has problems running Foundry, then they can turn off Dice So Nice 3D dice and that they don't render at all, but everyone else will have them render still. So sometimes the problem might be your internet connection. Maybe these helped, maybe they didn't. Like I said, we're starting to get into the area where it's gonna cost you money to make fixes, and the next one is definitely that. Let's talk about then getting new and better hardware. If none of the options above that I mentioned that I have gone through and that you should try one by one to see how it impacts your performance help. It might just be that your machine is just not powerful enough to handle Founder VTT because like I mentioned, there are minimum specifications. And if you've gone through all of these steps, you've tried all of these things and it's still not working, you're probably going to have to upgrade your machine. <clears throat> what should you aim for? Look at the minimum and recommended specifications that I mentioned and I'll link also down there below and use that as a guideline to see what you should be getting so that Foundry can run well, among other things. This is possibly a very expensive option. You know, getting a new PC uh, is not cheap. So that's why I left this at the very bottom of the list because I don't want you to go buying a new PC when there are other things that you could try. You know, I don't want you to go spending hundreds or you know over a thousand dollars to get a new PC just for Foundry. Try these other things first that I mentioned in this video and only then if things are not working, should you get a new PC. Lastly, there's actually a module called Potato or Not. Funny name, I know. What it essentially does is it lets you quickly change the Foundry performance options that I mentioned there before by choosing three different levels of performance depending on how good of a machine you have. And you can actually use this to quickly try performance stuff, but I didn't want to mention it in the beginning there because I wanted to give you an understanding of all the different parameters that you have at your disposal that you can change to impact your performance. But this module, which I will link down below there, potato or not, will give you like a quick way to check if there are settings that could improve your performance, but then you don't exactly know what changed. So I just wanted to give you an understanding and now you have it. And I also wanna emphasize that potato or not is not a silver bullet. It doesn't just make everything better. It just changes those underlying settings that I mentioned. So if you don't understand what has been changed, you don't know what else you can still do. So I advise you to try all those other things that I mentioned, and you can also give potato or not a shot if you would like. There we go. So with that, I hope that you have Foundry VTT running smooth as butter on your machine. What did you think about these performance options? Did you know about them? Let me know in the comments below if this will be helpful for making your game run smoother on either your machine or your friend's machines. And share this video with them, won't you? That would help me out. And also liking and subscribing down there helps me out more than you can think. I'm getting very close to being able to monetize this channel. And that is very exciting for me because this is a passion project of mine and I want this to grow. I really, really do. I love making these Foundry videos. Your positive feedback has been very encouraging. So thank you for that. And I also stream, you know, over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash dice and easy every Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern European Standard Time. That would be, I believe, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Come on over there, talk about Foundry and TTRPGs. I would love to see you there and I would love to chat with you over there live. And on the screen right now, you are going to see another video of mine. It is talking about some cool modules for Foundry that you should check out if you are a Foundry VTT power user like me. All right, everyone, 
Thank you so much for watching and sticking all the way to the end. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.